recently I was sitting alone in a very crowded UPMC Mercy cafeteria. My thoughts reflecting on the various encounters of people that I experienced that day. When all of a sudden a complete stranger from out of the blue asked me if I had a few moments. He went on to say his name, that he had known me from my previous assignment, and he pulled up a chair across the aisle. After introducing himself and the reason why he was at UPMC Mercy to visit a friend who was quite ill in the hospital that particular day. He told me that he was a retired county police officer for over 25 years. I thought that both of our re respective professions and vocations in being called to serve others, we've seen a lot of darkness and light, evil and goodness, sin and grace that lurk in the human heart on the earthly journey. No life or no person are immune or exempt from the daily struggle to be faithful in our thoughts, words, and actions that reflect being a Christian, Christ to others. The prophet Isaiah looks forward to the day when the light of God will shine forth in the darkness. Zebulun and Naphtali were the sons of Jacob, the leaders of two of the tribes of Israel. Their lands settled by their descendants were at the northernmost part of Israel. So of all of Israelites, they were the furthest from the summer sun, giving rise to Isaiah's description of the people. Those who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those in the land of gloom, a light has pierced. The darkness was not just a matter of geography, but these first lands by the invasion of the Assyrians. The Israelites were oppressed by their pagan conquerors who practiced false worship of many gods. Isaiah's prophecy was a bold proclamation, a hope against hope, that at a time a great light would shine upon the people freeing them from darkness and bringing them abundant joy and great rejoicing. Isaiah prophecy, they will know the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One, who will free, free them from the yokes that burden and plague them. The Gospel of St. Matthew is steeped in the Jewish Old Testament quotations of prophecies, expectations, as the people were shaped by Israel and seek the fulfillment of Israel. Yahweh's glory returned to the temple where Jesus is the son of David, from the house of David. Jesus began his public ministry in Galilee by proclaiming the words of the prophet Isaiah from chapter nine, verses one and two. An obscure prophet from Nazareth in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, where one would least expect to be at that part of the world, a great light would shine. Hope against hope has come true. Christ came to fulfill Isaiah's prophecy to be a great light for those who were in the abyss of darkness. Jesus' initial preaching began the same way that his cousin his ministry John the Baptist did with a simple proclamation about the need of conversion and change. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Greek word metanoia means a change of one's mind, change of direction, change of outlook. The Holy Spirit works to convict us of our sin and leads us to change to repentance, to conversion. The Holy Spirit is the mind changer and the heart changer and the life changer of our Christian lives. God created us with the gift of a free will and by repentance, it is so vital to make amends for our wrongs. Repentance is to turn away from the ugliness of sin that plagues us and others. 
and is the first step toward mature spiritual life. Once we repent and turn back to God, once we take that first step toward God, we open ourselves to the healing mercy and love of God. By turning away from sin and turning towards God, God gives us His grace, but He always respects our human freedom, the ability to choose and to decide whether to sin or not to sin, whether to turn back to God or to remain in our stubbornness, rebellion, and sinful ways. Disharmony and disunity is one of the great wraths and curses of humankind, which is present to some degree or other in all institutions, in all families, in all human relationships. Let us be a people of faith and forgiveness. Let us be a people who live in unity and reconciliation in the church, in the world, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our nation, and in all of our relationships. Join Jesus in this exciting and adventuresome mission. Join the army with the Prince of Peace and the light of the world. Join the company of the first apostles, of Simon and Andrew, James and John, who leave their fishing posts, their livelihood, their family, their familiar life for the radical call to be a follower of Jesus. These first apostles obeyed Jesus' command immediately from the lake shore as he summoned them to follow him. The results were unimaginable. Jesus cured people of every disease and illness Darkness, evil, sin, and sickness fade as Jesus wages battle against the prince of darkness, evil, the devil. Repeatedly, Jesus says to each one of us, each day of our lives, come, follow me. From the very beginning, Jesus' call was to serve others and to draw them more into the kingdom of God. In the words of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, joy is a net of love in which you catch souls.